the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You were only waiting for this moment to arise Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these sunken eyes and learn to see All your life You were only waiting for this moment to be free Blackbird fly Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, we're going to be learning Blackbird. Now, I want to go ahead and give a big shout out to Ashley for laying down an incredible vocal and really making this a fun duet to play. Now, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the ukulele part. So, first thing I want to just throw out there right away is that we're going to be learning this song in the key of A major. The original recording is in G major, so we're going to be up a whole step. And the reason why is because the key of A is a lot more f singer friendly for females. And if you are a male or you don't want to sing at all, I'd still encourage you to learn this because the ukulele part itself is a ton of fun to play, and even if you don't have somebody to duet with or you don't want to sing on top of it, it's still a super recognizable piece of music. And I, I promise you, as soon as you start playing it, everyone's going to know what song it is, with or without vocals. And it's equally as fun to play if you sing or if you don't sing. So let's talk a little bit about the lesson now. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play the entire arrangement. But if you want to get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's going to be available at this link right here. Or you can go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for Blackbird. Now also on that page will be the on-screen interactive tab viewer. So this is a really great feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. Now I want to go ahead and say that this arrangement is going to be perfect for the intermediate player. And the reason why is that what we're doing with our left hand, it's not super duper hard to play. But it is going to be a challenging piece in regards to our right hand. You see, the rhythms that we're playing, they can get a bit syncopated at times. Plus, this song is a little bit tricky to play because the time signature jumps around. Sometimes we're in 2-4, sometimes 3-4, sometimes 4-4. Four, four. So it can be a little bit tricky, but then again, it's a song that we've all pretty much grown up hearing a lot of times. So, you know, think, think back to... Uh, tying the lyrics to, to the music, and that'll kind of help guide you with where you're at in the piece. And of course, we're gonna break it down in this lesson. Now, the first thing I wanna to touch on is that this is a 
low G ukulele tune, so make sure you grab the low G. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is our right hand approach for finger picking and uh, also strumming, because some of these hits we're going to strum. So let's talk about the finger picking first. So for finger picking, you can use either a three or a four finger approach. Three finger means that your thumb gets string four and string three. Index would get string two, middle gets string one. And then a four finger, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. Each finger gets its own string. Now, as far as the strumming, I'm just going to be doing simple down strums. So I like to use the nail of my middle and ring finger. It gives it a little brighter pop than if you were to do the flesh of the thumb. So you kind of get a brighter, louder sound. And I think that sounds really nice with this tune. Right? So pretty simple and basic in terms of what our right hand is doing. But again, it'll get a little bit tricky when we add in some of that syncopation. But let's go ahead and kick into the first part of this tune, which is the intro. And I'll go ahead and play it again. It's those first couple bars that I just demoed. So iconic part, let's go ahead and break it down. So go ahead and make the stock A major chord. Now our first bar is gonna be out of three, four, and we're just gonna be plucking out of this A major chord. So we're gonna go ahead and play string three, string four, then take your ring, put it on the second fret of string three, but keep your index where it's at. We wanna keep it anchored. Play string three, play string four, play the open second, play string four. So you can notice that index stays put ring stays put. Rhythmically, all eighths. One and two and three and... So let's see if we can try that one together. So here we go. One and two and three and... So very, very simple bar to kick us off. Going into the next measure, we're going to lift that ring finger up. We don't need it anymore, but you can see I still have the stock A major shape. Now the only thing I'm going to do different is take my pinky, put it on the fourth fret of string one. That's going to give me a variation on this A major chord. So here's where we have our first strum attack. So we're going to go ahead and just strum down for the first hit. Then we're going to bounce between string four and string one. Now, here's what you want to get stuck in your head. Let's look at just the first half of this measure, right? So beats one and two. And by the way, this measure is in four, four. So a little tricky, right? We start in three, four, then we jump to four, four for the second measure. Tricky, tricky, Mr. McCartney. So here's what you want to get stuck in your head. Ba, da, 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 da. So you want to get that rhythm, ba, 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 ba stuck in your head. If you can sing it, you can play it. Rhythmically, we have one and a two e end. That's what we're playing if we count out the rhythms. One and a two e end. Ba, 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 ba. So you can count it out, you can sing it. Either one of those work. They all lead to the same result of getting this rhythm sounding nice and correct. Okay, so I want you guys to just hit pause work on it the way that's best for you. And all we're gonna do is strum 41414. Okay, so you can even call it out like that, strum 41414. That's another way that you can call it out. Now here's the beauty, that's beats one and two. You're gonna, literally gonna copy and paste and do that for beat three and four. So you can hear it's just back to back. Come in with me. So let's slow it down a little bit though. So. Right? So not too, too hard. Now if I backtrack and I play measure one into two. That's what we end up with. Let's see if we can try it together. About that same speed. So one and two and three and. Nice. 
Now, here's the cool thing. That's our intro. It's only two bars. So you got to remember that the first measure is 3-4. The second measure is 4-4. Four, four. So just get that stuck in your mind. And here's the cool thing. As we go into verse 1, the first two bars of verse 1, so measure 3 and 4, if you're following on the tab, they're the same as what we just played. So you're literally going to do the same thing. Again. But keep in mind that that's where the vocal comes in, right? It comes in on measure three, or the first bar of verse one. Now, I want to go ahead and state this before we learn the rest of verse one. Each verse that we have in this song is going to be eight bars in length, except for verse one. It's got an extra two bars tacked on to the end. And then when we get to the last verse of the tune, we see those same two bars tacked on at the end, and then they get repeated. That's a little bit confusing, so let's go ahead and state it again. Think of the verse as eight bars in length. That's the stock verse length, eight bars. But this first verse adds two additional bars. Just keep that in mind for right now, okay? So we know how to play the first two bars already. Let's go ahead and jump into the new part. So we're going to look at measure five and six on the tab. And if you're thinking of it in terms of eight bars for verse one, this is bar three and four for the verse. So here's what it sounds like. Okay, I lied. I only played the first one. <laughs> Let's start with that. So we're going to be playing out of a D to an E7 chord. So to make the D chord, it's going to essentially be the stock D that we all know and love, but we actually don't even need the fourth string. We're just going to play from the third string down. So take your index, put it on the second fret of string three, and your middle finger underneath the second fret of string two. And we have an open A underneath that. So for this first hit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to either strum or pluck only string three and two. Okay, after that I'm going to play string three, open A, and then back to string three. So from here we're going to go into an E7 chord. So to do this transition, what we're going to do is take our pinky, put it on the fourth fret of string two, and then drop our middle finger down to the first string second fret. So I've got two, four, two, and our picking pattern is going to go two, three, one, three. So the hard thing is going to be the transition, going from D to E7. Now watch my left hand as I go into the second chord. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep it all steady eighths. And there's one thing that stands out or sticks out. Watch the pinky finger. You notice that I go to the pinky first before this middle finger lifts up and drops down. So watch that again. So in essence, we don't have to go ba ba in unison, right? We don't have to move both fingers at the exact same time. We move one finger when it's called for in the music. One and two and three and four and so that makes the transition so much easier you don't have to go boom at the same time you do pinky first and then middle finger okay so let's see if we can try that one all the way through and we'll keep it nice and slow and nice and steady all eighths three and four and nice so not too, too hard once you get that little trick down with the transition. Now, as we go into our next measure, we're going to see the exact same syncopation that we used for measure two. So if you've got that ingrained in the membrane, so to speak, this measure should be really, really straightforward. So here's what it sounds like. So you can hear that exact same beat, but Da, ba, 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 ba. Right, we can hear that exact same rhythm that we did for measure two. And 
actually what our right hand is doing is pretty much the same thing as well. So let's learn the first of the two chords, which is an F sharp minor. So go ahead and take your ring finger, put it on the sixth fret of string three, and then put your middle finger down on the fifth fret of string two. So I'm gonna go ahead and strum from three down, and then I'm gonna vamp between the third and the first string. So literally strum three, one, three, one, three. So it's that exact same kind of movement that our right hand did in measure two, but this time around, we're alternating between the third and the first string, okay? So we've got strum, three, one, three, one, three. Now, when we go into our next chord, which is a D minor, we're gonna lift our middle finger up, move the ring finger down a half step. So it's the fifth fret on string three still, but we're gonna take our pinky, we're gonna put it underneath, so it'll be the fifth fret of string two. And you probably guess what we're gonna do with our right hand. The exact same thing. So we've got strum three, one, three, one, three. Okay, so take a moment just to go between those two chords. And we wanna keep that rhythm nice and steady through both of them. So let's see if we can try this one together. And maybe, let's see if we can just loop it. So I'm gonna play it once through, and I want you to come in on the second and the third time. We'll do it together. Nice, how did you do? So not too, too hard, right? Because it's pretty much the same thing we did in that second measure, so very familiar. Now if I backtrack, I'm gonna go ahead and play those last uh, two bars all the way through. So D to E7 to F sharp minor to D minor. Quite a few chord changes, but here's what it sounds like all the way through. Nice. So really, really starting to uh, sound like the music. If I backtrack, I'm gonna play from the first bar of the verse. So measure three all the way to measure six. And this gives us a good gist of where we're at so far with the verse. So that's a good gist of where we're at so far. And before we jump into seven and eight, let's actually take a step back. Let's you and I try five and six together one time through. Because I think it's a really good practice for us to go from eighth note, one and two and three and four and one and a two e and three and a four e end. It's good practice for us to jump between those two rhythms, straight forward into syncopated. So let's try those two bars one more time and then we'll learn the next couple. So here we go. One, two, three, and four, and. Nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at seven into eight. So seven, something happens. We go into a measure of two, four. So we've only got two beats. One and two and before we go back into 4-4 four, four for measure eight. And you can hear that measure eight has a new syncopated rhythm that we're going to be learning. So let's take one at a time first though. Let's start with just seven by itself. So seven, we're gonna be playing out of two chords. We've got this A major seven. Let's go ahead and learn how to finger it. We're gonna use our index for the second fret of string four. Ring is the fourth fret of string three, and pinky's underneath that, so four on string two. So I'm gonna do a strum attack, and then I'm gonna hit string four. Then I'm gonna to switch to this B7 chord. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're gonna lift the ring finger up, we don't need it, move the pinky up a half step to five, and then place your middle finger down on three on the third string. And I want you to pluck three and two, and then go back to four. So this entire time, my index finger stayed put. It did not move. And you can see the motion. So I've got strum, four, pluck, four. So the key thing here is that 
We're ignoring string one. We're not playing anything on string one. We can either strum or pluck for the first hit. So we got two, four, four, and then hit string four. And then we're going to move to the B7. So to do so, pinky slides up, middle comes down, pluck, and then back to string four. So I like to do strum four, pluck four, just because it gives me a little bit of a different sound, right? Instead of going pluck four, pluck four, right? It's very uniform. So we can get a nice tonal color change, kind of like a little variation if we go strum then pluck. But it's very simple, right? So strum four, pluck four. So if we try that together, strum four, pluck four. Okay, going into measure eight, we're back into four, four. So we're going to go a stock D major to a stock D minor. Okay, so these are all basic cowboy chords we learned on day one of playing. So for the first hit though, with both of these chords, we're copying what we did with the previous measure, where we hit from four to two. So I want you to give me a strum from four to two. After that, we've got a repetitive picking pattern. So it's gonna go four, one, two, three. And let me say it in time though. So I've got strum, four, one, two, three. So here's our rhythm. If we break it down into the actual hits, one and ah, e end. So what you wanna do is approach it two ways. You wanna think of it as the Count, counting the rhythms like that, one and a, e, n, three and a, e, n. That's the entire bar. Or you can just sing those hits. Ba, da, 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 ba, 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 ba. Right, so try with me. One and a, e, n, three and a, e, n, da, 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 ba, 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 da. Okay, so get that stuck in your head. Put it down to the instrument. Sounds like that. And another thing you can do, again, is you can call the hitch. Strum for one, two, three, strum for one, two, three. That works really well too. Da, do, da, 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 do, da, da, da. Right, once you get that stuck in your head, it's super catchy, very melodic with the harmony we're playing too. So make that D chord, and let's see if we can put the first half together. So we have strum for one, two, three, so let's see if we can try that together. I'm just gonna loop the D chord and you can come in on the second and third time. So I lied, I played one extra time, it's fun. Now go into the D minor chord, so lift the pinky up, make it the stock D minor and give me the exact same thing. So everything to a T, strum for one, two, three. Okay, so let's see if we can try D. Switching to D minor, okay? And let's have you come in on the second and third time. So we have. Nice. Now you can hear one of those hits, I accidentally strummed all four strings. And it's not a big deal, right? If you make a mistake when you're practicing, don't worry about it, just take a mental note of it like I did right there. So that way I can really try to pay a little bit closer attention to what my right hand's doing so I can target four to two. Because you can hear the melody. You really want that melody's notes to ring out. And that's what makes this progression that's coming up so beautiful. So you can really hear da 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 <laughs> You can hear that movement of the melody note just going down in pitch. Really, really beautiful. Okay, so backtracking seven into eight. It's a little tricky because you've got that bar of two going into the bar of four. So you have one and two and one. 
So a little bit tricky, right, going from such a steady rhythm eighth note into the syncopation. Um, but let's see if we can try it together. So we'll go kind of a bit slower, maybe. Let's see if we can try that. One and two and one and two and one and I and three and I and. Okay, and one more time without me counting it out. So we have one and two. Now, as we go into the next measure, we're going to do the same continuation of what we did previously for that eighth measure. So we're going to start with the A chord, just stock A major, and you're doing everything the same. So strum for one, two, three, okay? Then we're going to go to a B7. So we've got a full bar chord. So lay flat on the second fret, add the ring finger to the third fret of string three. So this one's a little bit tricky because we want to hit the top strings, four and three. So our melody note is this third fret of third string. So we want to target our strum or our pluck, if you want, just to be those top two strings. So that's the only thing that changes. So I'm targeting four and three. There it is. Then I'm going to do everything else the same for one, two, three. Okay, so I've got the top two, and then the rest is the same. So strum for one, two, three. Okay, so this one, again, we've got A, strum four to two, strum for one, two, three, switch to B7, strum four to three, four, one, two, three, and the rest is the same. Okay, so let's try that one together. So we have strum, da, da, ba, da, strum, ba, 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 go. Nice. We'll see if we can get that melody a little bit cleaner. So I don't think I heard the E string very well. So again, we have ba, da, da, ba, da, ba, 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 da. And it kind of helps too to kind of move your body a little bit so you can kind of feel the feel the beats, feel the music, feel the rhythm, right? So don't be afraid to rock in the chair, even if somebody in your household looks at you a little funky. But if I go back, I just want you guys to hear the movement of the melody notes that we talked about. Now you can start to really hear and see how everything is taking shape. As we go into the next bar, we're doing a continuation for the first half. So go back to that basic D chord, lift the pinky finger up, and we get what we are looking for right here. It's acting as a dominant of an E with some extra notes for color. Now, I'm going to call this one out because it's a little bit unorthodox. I've got second ring open open. So all on the second fret, two, two, zero, zero. So just like we saw with B7, we're going to highlight our strum to be only string four and three. Okay, so four and three, or you can pluck, but just those top two strings. The rest is the same, strum four, one, two, three. Okay. Lift the ring finger up, go to the basic A, and we're going to finish up in an easy way. We have strum one and two, sorry, four and three, hit string four, and then pluck one and two. So I've got the top two strings again, string four, open one and two. Rhythmically, three and four. Now, if I put that bar together, and sounds like that. So let's see if we can try that together. We have ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba, do, go. So not too bad. Now if I backtrack again, we can hear that entire movement of the melody. Very 
very, very pretty. Okay, so what you guys really want to do is you, you just want to get the chords that you're going for, from memorized. So all those transitions. And to do so, what you can do is you can just go D, D minor, to A, to B7, to this E7, and then to an A. So you can just cycle through that as half notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay? That gives you muscle memory of what your left hand's doing. After that, it's just putting that repetitive right hand into motion. Okay? Now, that's going to conclude the eight bars of the verse. Now, if you remember at the beginning of this, uh, section teaching verse one, I said that there's a couple extra bars added on. So we're about to learn those extra two bars, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to backtrack. I'm going to play these eight bars that we've learned and keep in mind that these eight bars are the standard form of the verse. So when we see our next verse, it's only going to be eight bars in length. We don't have these extra two we're about to learn. So Tricky, tricky. This The form of this song is kind of confusing with all the time sig si switching back and forth and the uh, unorthodox uh, verse one has two extra bars, verse two doesn't. <laughs> it's a little confusing. But let me cycle through everything that we've learned for the verse, eight bars, and then we'll learn the last two for verse one. So it sounds like this. pretty movement happening. Now, as we look at the last two bars, remember these get tagged on just for this first verse, but also at the end of the song, but we'll talk about that when we get there. So here's the movement that's happening at the end. So you can hear quite a bit of repetition as in the previous two bars, so 9 and 10. A lot of what happened in 9 and 10 happens again for 11 and 12, but it starts off a little bit different. We have a cool little walk down. So take your ring finger, put it on 7 on string 4, and your middle finger 6 on string 3. So I want you to hit just those top two strings, then string 4 by itself, then drop down a half step with the ring finger and remove the middle. Place your index on the 4th fret of string 3, so I've got 6, 4. Hit the top two strings, then string 4 by itself. So you've got 7, 6, then 6, 4. Okay, so 1 and 2 and... Now, here comes the repetition. Go back to the B7, remember how we hit the top two strings? Then did the same repetitive right hand pattern. 4, 1, 2, 3. Switch to the E11, top two, strum, four, one, two, three, then to A, three and four. So you know the second half of 11, and you know all of 12, because they're identical to the second half of nine and all of 10. So all we did was we added this cool little walk down for the first half. So all together, those two bars, like that. Let's give it a shot. So we have three and four and. Okay, so keep that in mind. We're going to see it at the very end of the tune, but in the next verse, which we're about to jump into right here, we don't have it. So the next eight bars of this tune are identical to the first eight bars of verse one. So verse two is literally just going to go. Those same eight bars to a T. 
So that's measure 13 to 20 on the tab, identical to measure 3 to 10. After that, we jump into our chorus. And this will be the first chorus that we play. And our chorus has that iconic walk down. So let me go ahead and play it for you, and then we'll break it down and learn it. It sounds like this. So there's the first couple measures. Let's take a look at what's happening. So we're gonna be starting with a G chord. So take your ring finger, put it on the seventh fret of string three, and your pinky's underneath it, seven on two. So you're gonna strum four to two. Then I want you to hit string three. From here, we're going to a D chord. We're gonna lift our pinky up, move the ring finger down to six on the third string, put your middle finger down on five. So I want you to pluck three and two. So I've got six and five, and then hit string three. So all together I have strum three, pluck three. So just hit pause, take a moment to get comfortable with that, and let's see if we can try it together. Here we go, and it's all eighths. So we have three and four and two and nice. Now going into the next half, we're gonna keep the same shape intact, so move it down a whole step. So go to four and three. This gives us an E minor. We're gonna pluck those same two strings, three and two. But here's the difference, is that we wanna add our index finger to the second fret of string four. And to do so, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a full bar chord, even though we're only playing string four. But keep this bar chord in mind because what comes next utilizes it. So backtracking. From the D, we go down a whole step to four and three, and we bar across the second with our index. Pluck three and two, then string four, then lift three and two, bar, pluck three and two, and then string four. You can see our last chord is the D major, but we're in position to play it out of a bar. So watch the motion of my left hand. Okay, and let me get it a little cleaner. There we go. Those bars, they take a lot of strength. So if you need a break, don't, don't worry. I have to take a break right now too, just to get a little bit more uh, strength brought back in my hand. So let's see if we can try this one all the way together. Nice and slow, keep it all steady eighths. So we have three and four and... And I guess I lied, that's a little fast. Let's go slower. Three and four and... Now, going into the next measure, we're gonna be playing out of an A minor back into the stock D. So grab the A minor like we always do with the middle finger. And for this one, we're going back into that same rhythm that we last had that was that syncopated. So remember the, that rhythm where we had strum for one, two, three. We're doing that exact same rhythm, but this time around, we have a different right hand pattern. So our right hand pattern is actually easier. We're gonna go strum, four pluck, four pluck. Now this pluck is gonna be string three and two open. So I've got strum four to two. We've seen that before, right? Strum four to two, hit string four, pluck three and two open, back to string four, and then three and two open. So strum, four pluck, four pluck. Let's see if we can try that in looping. So not too, too hard, right? Go to the D chord, do the same thing. Strum, four pluck, four pluck. So again, strum four to two. And give me that repetitive right hand pattern. So go from A minor, strum, four pluck, four pluck, D. Let's try it together on a loop. Nice. 
Yes, that one I think all of us would agree is easier than the other pattern that we had. But if we backtrack, here's what's a little tricky. You have eighth notes. Into that syncopated 16th note rhythm. So you want to be careful with your timing on this tune, that you don't want to like play this one. right at a fast tempo to try and match the 16th note because it's not right the eighth notes is half as slow so one and two and three and four and one and i and and i and <laughs> trying to remember all the rhythms we're counting try it again one and two and three and four and one and i and three and i and there we go a little bit tricky of course if you don't want to count it you can just sing it. Remember how I talked about getting into it. It's okay to rock your body and feel the beat. Let's try together. One and two and three and ready, go. Pretty cool when you get it down. Now, here's the beauty we're pretty much going to repeat that exact same thing. So here's the next two bars. So some minor changes happening on the second go around. So it starts the same. We have the same walk down, identical. So let's skip over that. That was measure 23. Looking at 24 sounds like this. So back to the A minor. This time around, we have a different right hand pattern and we have a different rhythm. We're going back to the first syncopated rhythm we had where it was one and a two E end. So one and a two E end. So ba, 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 ba. Get that one stuck in your head again. So here's what we're gonna do. Strum, four, two, four, two, four. Hmm. Seems familiar, right? Very similar to what we did before. So we vamp or we bounce between two strings. So strum four to two, four two, four two, four. And we bounce between those two strings. So let's see if we can try that one together. So we have strum four two, four two, four. Nice. Keep the middle finger where it's at. Take the ring, put it on the third fret of string three. Hit the top two strings. So strum just the top two. Then bounce between four and three. Same rhythm. So we've got strum four, three, four, three, four. Okay? So not too, too bad. So strum four, two, four, two, four. Strum four, three, four, three, four. <laughs> it's a lot to say. Let's try it together on a loop. Going into our last measure for this chorus, it's only one bar and it's a bar of two, four. Drop that ring finger underneath the middle, so move it down a half step, and hit the top two strings. So you got double two. And we're doing the same pattern we did for B7. So top two, four, three, four, three, four. Okay? So recapping from A minor. That's what we end up with. Let's give it a shot. Ready, go. So not too, too bad. I think that's probably one of the easiest parts of the tune. But let me do this. Let me play all five measures for the chorus. And it sounds like this. So here's the thing, you want to memorize the chorus is five measures. And that's going to happen again when we see the next chorus. So those are the five bars. So get that um, stuck in the membrane 
And if you need to, you can hit pause, you can practice that. But let's take a look at what happens next. And what happens next is kind of cool because we're going into an instrumental verse, which means there's no singing, right? And the instrumental verse, it has only one tiny variation, which is optional if you want to throw it in. But I think the bigger thing about the instrumental verse, if you listen to the original recording, you can hear that they build the dynamic up a little bit. So let me play from the end of the chorus going into this instrumental verse. So you can hear that I just gradually got a little bit louder in my playing. So I'm starting pretty soft. That's what they do with the, the original recording. They just get a little bit louder with their playing. So those first couple bars of the verse, um, they're identical to the first two for verse one that we learned. So you know what the verse plays, but you just wanna pluck a little bit louder gradually as you play through them. And here's the little change that I threw in there. And I actually think it's on the original recording too. Let me play the first two of this verse. So you can hear it starts the same. First bar is identical, second bar. The first half is identical, the second half is a little change. So we're gonna go strum, four, strum, three and four. So it's just a way for you to build that dynamic, right? You can just play that chord hits a little bit louder too. So that's optional. If you want to throw in that rhythm, go for it. Uh, if not, you can just keep it as the steady. Doesn't really matter. But the instrumental verse, eight bars of the verse, you know those eight bars already, so let's skip over that. That takes us to the chorus, so measure 34. Well, we already know that the chorus is going to be five bars in length. So you're gonna do the exact same five bars that we just covered. And that leads you into the interlude. And here's what the interlude sounds like. And actually, I'm gonna play only half of it. So I'm gonna play the first uh, four bars of the interlude, and then we'll break it down and talk about it, okay? So we've got some strumming happening. If we look at the first bar, we already know it. It's identical to the first bar of the tune. So let's look at the second bar for this interlude, measure 40. Back to the A with the pinky added, and we're going to be doing a strum pattern. Let's look at the first half. So, slow it down. Ba, da, 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 da. I think we've heard that rhythm before, right? One and da two e end. But here's the thing. Anytime you have strum patterns, I know a lot of teachers put up the arrows and I'm gonna put up the arrows because they're, they are helpful. But the arrows can be a bit of a crutch, right? Here's the thing. When you see a 16th note pattern, and I'll put one up here, let's get rid of the uh, rhythm hits and stuff. You can see that I've got one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, right? You can see that it literally just goes down, up, 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 right? Alternates between down and up. Every time you have a one or a two or a three or a four, you strum down. Every time you have an end, you strum down. Every time you have an e or an a, you strum up. Now, if you can memorize that, anytime you see a number, down. Anytime you see an E, up. Anytime you see an end, down. Anytime you see an A, uh, up. If you can get that down, you never need uh, strum markers. You don't need those arrows to tell you what to do because it's built into the rhythm. So that's the little trick I want you guys to take away from this. So if we think of the rhythm, one end, a two E end, then we know we have down, down, up, down, up, down. Okay? 
So make the chord down, all four strings, and I'm gonna do my down ups follow, following that first hit to kind of target string one and two. I wanted to, uh, I want these bass strings to not be so prominent throughout. So I want them to ring out, and then I want these bottom strings to take precedent. So you can hear that. Down, down, up, down, up. Okay, try that with me. Down, down, up, down, up. Let's go again. Down, down, up, down, up. Now we're gonna follow with another down. But this time around, it's just gonna be your thumb hitting the fourth string. Okay, so down, down, up, down, up, down. String four. So let's call this. Down, down, up, down, up, four. Nice. Now, the second half of this measure is gonna sound like this. So I've got strum all four, string four, down up, string four. So strum four, down up four. Let's try that together. Three and four E and, here we go. Ready, go. Three and four E and. And again, calling it out the other way. Ready, go. Strum, four, down, up, four. So here's the hard thing, connecting the first into the second half. Let's see if we can go uh, looping. Let's see if we can loop it. I think that's gonna be the best way. Down, down, up, down, up, four. Down, four, down, up, four. How did you do? Here's the cool thing. The first half that we learned, down, down, up, down, up, four. That's gonna happen two times for the next measure. So this next measure is super easy because you already know how to play it. So let's try that. Let's loop that a few times. everything together, this is what we end up with so far. First three out of four. Now to finish it up, you're going to start a retardando on this last measure, measure 42. And you're literally just going to go strum, four, pluck one and two, back to four, Pluck one and two, back to four, pluck one and two. Strum four, pluck four, pluck four, pluck. But naturally and gradually slow down. Now that last pluck is a fermata. You're gonna hold it for as long as you want. There's really no exact amount of time. This is where the song comes to a screeching halt, right? And we hear all the the, the, the bird sounds, right? So you're literally just going to have a break in the music for as long as you wish. So let me go ahead and do this. Let me play the entire four bars together with the retardando and a break, and then I'll come back in to finish it up, and then we'll talk about the last few bars for the interlude. as long as you want to hold it out. But when we come back in, if you want to, this is what they do on the record. They add a little slide down note. So you're gonna take the 14th fret of the fourth string with your middle, and then just slide down. So play the note, and you can gradually lift pressure up, probably around the fifth fret. And it kind of gives it that slide effect, or the fade out effect, I should say. Because if you don't lift up, you can hear it just kind of sounds like one of those real rain sticks, but not as pretty. So start to lift pressure up around the fifth fret, and it gives you that fade effect, right? 
So that's just going to be how you kick into the last three bars of this interlude. Now the last three bars sound like this. So very, very easy stuff compared to all the strumming that we just did. So let's break down what's happening. Start with the A major chord and you're going to play three, then string four, take the ring, put it underneath the middle. So second fret on string three, then back to string four, then open E, then back to string four. Now here's the key. This is a bar of three. So we have one and two and three and all eighth notes. So first, second, open E, and then back to four. Let's try that together. One and two and three and one and two and three and... Nice. Now, going into the next measure, we're gonna take our ring finger. We're gonna drop it down to the second fret of string two. So play that note, back to string four, play the open E, back to string four, take your pinky, put it on the third fret of string three, back to string four. So this last half, again, is the second fret on string two, four, open E, four, pinky on the third fret on string three, back to four. So you may want to just connect those two. One and two and three and one and two and three and... Okay, let's see if we can try that. One and two and ready, go. Now our last measure for the interlude is a bar of two and it's that same E11 that we played. So double two up top. And remember how we just vamped on it, right? Well, this time around, we're actually not gonna do a strum like I just did. We're gonna start with just the third string by itself, then four, three, four, three, four. So we've got three, four, three, four, three, four. And it makes more sense when you put it into context. start to hear the song that way. So let's see if we can try all three. One and two and three and four. Okay, so a little tricky because three, four, three, four, two, four, but a lot easier than the strumming part. So that's everything for the interlude. The key thing that you want to remember for as long as you want, then you've got the... Uh, little, kind of, it's kind of like a little, I don't even know what to call it. It's, it's, I call this whole section interlude, but it's kind of like this instrumental uh, section that kicks you back into where the verse starts. So it's just an extra additional piece of instrumental music, really pretty. But that's everything for that section. And next up is the third verse. So you guys are literally gonna play the same eight bars of the verse. But this is also the last verse of the tune. So remember I said that you've got those two additional bars from verse one, they get tacked on twice at the end of this verse, verse three. So I'm going to call this our inch, or sorry, our outro. <laughs> so this third verse, play the eight bars to a T, then you're going to do this for the outro. So what are you doing? Well, you're doing the exact same two bars that ended verse one. So that was measure 11 and 12. So you're gonna do 11, 12, and again, 11, 12, but add a retardando for the last time. 
for the very last measure, just to end the tune. But you guys already know what to play, so... That's it. So this song, there's a lot of repetition in it, right? When you learn uh, a section of music, you've, we've seen that it gets repeated a lot. There's a lot of rhythmic themes that got repeated a lot. And that all helps add to the fact that it makes it a little bit easier to memorize. Although I do think the hardest thing about this song is the form itself. You know, we switched between three, four, 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 two, four. And there wasn't a uniform uh, number of bars per measure, like the chorus had five, and then the verses had eight, except the first verse had 10. So it can be a little tricky. Try to memorize the form section by section as you work on this tune. And other than that, remember, the syncopated rhythms can be a little tricky, but if you can sing it, you can play it. So guys, that's gonna wrap up everything for this lesson. So I want to give you a friendly reminder that if you wanted to get the tabs to print off Keep For Your Records, that was available at this link. Or you can go to the site ratclass101.com, do a search for Blackbird. Now also on that page was the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer, so you can literally hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a really great asset for working on this tune. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I will see you in the next one. Take care.